Good day, YouTubers. I did a video a while back on charging a 24 volt battery bank made up of two 12 volt batteries from your 12 volt alternator on your outboard. And everyone's found that very interesting and it works great as long as you've got two 12 volt batteries to make up your 24 volt. But I've just recently replaced my two 12 volt batteries, my two AGMs, with one 24 volt lithium battery. And that requires a whole different solution to charging your 24 volt battery from your 12 volt alternator. Fortunately, there is a way to do it, and I'm going to show you that now. It can be applied to a battery bank where you've got two 12 volt batteries connected to make up 24. You could do the same sort of system. But the method I previously used is plenty good enough for two batteries. It's just that with a 24 volt battery, you have to have a different setup, and this is it. So let's have a look at that. I'll just start off with unpacking the 24 volt battery. I was pretty lucky that I managed to get one of these when it was on nearly 50% off special. They're coming down in price all the time, but I thought that was pretty exceptional. The sort of once in a lifetime offer you just can't pass up. And that was what prompted me mainly to make the switch over from the two 12 volt AGMs to the one 24 volt lithium. Had it not been for that huge reduction in price, I probably would have persevered with the AGMs for a little while longer. In order to charge the 24 volt battery from a 12 volt alternator, I went with a Victron Orion Smart Charger. The one that I got was the non-isolated version, and I did that for two reasons. The primary reason was that the isolated version wasn't available from the same supplier who had an incredibly good price on it at the time, the, that is the non-isolated version. Had they had the isolated version at the same sort of discount, I would have got it. The secondary reason was that I've always run a non-isolated system, so I didn't really see the need to do anything else. The isolated version of the charger will always be a little bit dearer, but if it's not outside your budget and it is readily available, I would go with that by preference, I think. However, having said that, it doesn't really matter. You talk to anyone about these systems, it doesn't matter about having the negative rail isolated between the 12 and 24. There's a number of different models in the Victron Orion charger range, so you need to make sure you get the right one. You want the 12 slash 24, so the first 12 means that's the input voltage, the 24 means that's the output voltage, and then they come in different amperage ranges. I got the 12, 24, 15, which is a 24 volt, 15 amp output. That takes a 12 volt, 30 amp input. It works just by multiplication and division. You take the voltage and double it, you take the amperage and halve it. So 12 volts to 24 volts, 30 amps to 15 amps. That's just the way electricity works. So my outboard in best performance mode, the alternator will output about 27 amps. So that's just shy of the 30 amps that it can take. So worst case scenario, I'll get nearly a full amperage charge onto that battery. Make sure you look up what your alternator is capable of outputting, you don't want to have an alternator that outputs 50 amps and try to put that into a 30 amp input. It's just not good for anything and can cause fires, depending on whether the circuitry inside is good enough to trip out when it detects a problem. I'd expect most units are, and the Victron units have a good reputation for that sort of thing. However, you can't be sure with all brands. Some of these cheaper units from China just aren't up to standards, really. I haven't bought anything like a 12 to 24 volt charger from there, but I have bought other units from China that quality control leaves something to be desired. So once you've done all the research, selected the model that you want and bought the charger, all we need to do is install it in the boat, and that's a very simple operation. In my case, it was made even more simple by the fact that my Yamaha outboard has an auxiliary charge circuit. So I allow the primary charge circuit to go to the a crank and the start battery, and the auxiliary charge circuit goes to the trolling battery, the 24 volt system through the Victron. The way that works is that the primary charging circuit gets used first, the engine itself detects when the batteries are charged and then switches the output to the secondary auxiliary circuit. So my cranking and house batteries have priority to be charged first, and then my trolling batteries get the charge after that. The system works well. I have been using that same system for a few years with the old installation with the two 12-volt batteries. 
as well as with this new one with the lithium battery. One thing I like a lot about the Victron units that I have is that they all have Bluetooth connectivity to your mobile phone. So if you've got a smartphone, connect to it via Bluetooth and get a readout of everything that's happening in your charging system. I have a Victron AC charger as well as the one here in the boat. You know, it detects them both and tells me all about what's happening. Really happy with the Victron units. I'm sure there's other manufacturers doing much the same thing, but this is the one that I have experience with and it's been good to me so far. All right, I've got my Victron unit connected here. I've just updated the firmware straight after connecting to it. Notice that I haven't got the 24 volt side connected yet. You can't connect it to the battery until you've set up your charging profile. I've got a few wiring diagrams here just to illustrate what's happening. This first one is the exact setup that I've got. I have the cranking battery on the engine. I have the Andina combiner charging my house battery after the starting battery has charged. And then I have the auxiliary charger from the engine going to the Victron unit, which charges the 24 volt trolling battery. And for a switch between the trolling battery and the trolling motor, I just use the circuit breaker. That works fine. Notice that on this setup, my negative terminals are connected between the 12 volt and the 24 volt system, so I have a common ground amongst everything. This is generally referred to as a non-isolated system. This next diagram is much the same setup as far as the batteries and the combiner and everything else goes. The main difference is that this one is designed for an isolated circuit where your ground system is different between your 12 volt batteries and your 24 volt batteries. You'll notice that the 24 volt ground only goes to the 24 volt battery and the trolling motor, whereas the 12 volt ground is common between both of the 12 volt batteries. This next one is just in there to show you the system set up with a pair of 12 volt batteries. If you've got a pair of 12 volt lithium batteries, you can set the system up this way. It's just a matter of connecting the two batteries positive to negative and then treating them like one big 24 volt battery. Again, this one shows the common ground between the 12 volt and the 24 volt systems. And lastly, this one is the same setup but with the isolated ground. So two 12 volt batteries connected in a series to give 24 volts to the trolling motor with an isolated ground to the Victron unit. Notice that in all of these setups, the Yandina combiner is common because that manages the charging of the house battery and the cranking battery. And this image just illustrates an essential piece of research that you need to do, and that is figuring out just how much amperage your motor puts out. You need the net amperage, not the gross amperage, because gross amperage is what the alternator will output, but some of that's used for running the engine, so you want the net output that's available for charging the batteries. This particular chart is for the Yamaha engines. If you're running Suzuki, Mercury, something else, you'll need to get the chart for your engine. I'll also just note that the Yamaha engine, the auxiliary charger, only cuts in after the batteries are charged on a primary circuit. Other engines are, I believe, different. I think some manufacturers actually split the voltage between the main and auxiliary circuits. There is no, well, basically, I suppose, a VSR in there to control which one gets the charging voltage. Now, well, that's it all mounted back in there. The 24-volt battery right at the very back. Victron 12 to 24-volt charger there. And the circuit breaker for the Mincator's up there where it always has been been a much larger job than I anticipated, mainly because I pulled a lot of things out to rewire it properly. But I am very happy with the job now. Not only that, but all my monitoring on the batteries now is via Bluetooth on my phone. And I'll demonstrate that later. Now that the job's finished, I've got the charger on charging the batteries. You can see there that Victron unit there is taking 12 volts in and putting 24 volts out to charge the battery. I'll show you the charge state of that shortly on a still. That's the battery there. 
don't get over how light these lithium batteries are. That is way lighter than even a single 12 volt AGM that I had. I had two 12 volt, uh, I think, uh, 140 amp hour AGMs in there for the trolling motor. And that one lithium is lighter than one of them. The little Yandina charger there. You can see the green light on it. She's going fine, charging up the other lithium battery, the 12 volt battery. Got the battery charger, the home battery charger connected here to the 12 positive and over there to the negative. That's my trolling motor isolator from the engine alternator to the Victron unit. Let's put up a few screenshots here of the Bluetooth interface showing the unit before I start charging so everything's off. Then when I start the charger, it goes into an absorption charge mode because the charge in the battery is down and it takes as much current as it can get until the charge comes up. Once the charge is up, nearly fully charged, it switches to a float mode which just finishes off the charging and then maintains the charge in the battery. It works the same on the water and by doing a bit of running around between the fishing spots, it does extend the time that I can use the trolling motor on the water. And of course it also means I don't need to buy a special 24 volt charger for the trolling motor battery. I can just connect my normal 12 volt charger to the circuit and it charges all the batteries. So it saves me the expense of buying a separate charger, which pretty much justifies the expense of buying the Victron unit. And then I've got the bonus of being able to charge it while I'm on the water as well. That's a win-win for me. Now I'll just mention that if you're interested in buying one of these Victron units, I'll put some links in the video description below. You'll be able to check out the prices that are available on eBay. The search links there so that you'll be able to pick the best price. Well, there you go, that's it for the video and it is that simple. It's really easy to set up and I've been using it for a few months now. It charges the battery really well. You are losing amperage. So if you're feeding 30 amps into the Victron unit at 12 volts, then you're getting 15 amps out at 24 volts. There'll be some losses, but it basically works that way. If you're doubling the voltage, you're halving the amperage. If you're doing a fair bit of running around between your fishing stops, it'll keep your trolling motor going for a lot longer than if you didn't have it at all. And the other advantage is you can hook up a 12 volt charger at home and the Victron unit will convert that to 24 volts so you don't have to go out and buy a special 24 volt lithium charger just to charge your trolling motor batteries. As far as I can see it's a win-win. I'm very happy with it. I can do up a wiring diagram if anyone's having trouble sorting out how to wire it up. I can do up a wiring diagram of what I've done. It may or may not suit your application but if you want it just direct message me on my Facebook page and I'll send you one. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Until next time, good fishing.